Thanks, Margie. Carly and I will still be over Thank you there. for coming to the school committee. A little early start. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so the early start is so that we can go on a tour of PCIS. I see everybody is lined up there. And so why don't we uh, do that now? Why don't we just, uh, we'll be back at 7 o'clock for the regular meeting. Uh, our garden, garden club this year is going to be designing the landscape for outside in this front area, and they're going to be doing the planting, and so they're going to be working with the advisor in the fall to kind of see what they want that to look like and then actually do some planting and, and, and some stuff out there so it's a little more appealing and mulching. So, but it'll be nice because the water won't pull up all the, all the, uh, the mulching. It won't turn to ice. So that, the gutters will be in in the fall and then the spring we'll have some landscaping done. So when you first come into lunch, the fourth grader, uh, sixth graders have the first four rows. And when you first come into lunch, you go, sixth graders go straight up to buy their lunch. They don't like, they go straight up and then like six, eight, six, seventh and six, eighth graders have to like sit down. So we, so when you go up and buy, you have to sit in the first four or five rows and fill and you fill them up. And the lunch choices are a lot better than our elementary <laughs> schools. Um, I don't buy a lot, but I would definitely buy. Like I didn't buy at all in elementary school, and I bought here like the first day of school, and I was like, oh, this is so much better than elementary <laughs> school. And like it's also better because we have more kids that can sit at a table. And like if like somebody's sitting alone, like you can, there's more kids that can sit with them instead of like having four to a table and you're not allowed to pull over a chair. At, at the elementary schools, you were only allowed to have like four to a table, so it was kind of unfair because some kids would have to sit alone or like, or with like one other person that they don't really know, and then like, and then they like wouldn't really talk to each other. So here you could sit with like more people and like talk to other people and like make more friends. <laughs> so it's very separated. You have a sixth grade section, seventh grade section, and eighth grade section. And, um, as these guys will tell you, there's really no integration between the two grades. The only time they're out of the seat is to get their lunch, put their tray away, and go to the back. You know, that's very uh, segregated as far as grade level. So it, it, it really does work. And we're able to keep that house going. Like that. So we're gonna, this is our, our music wing. So we have chorus on one side and band on the other. And Amber's going to talk a little about the two programs. Um, in both, I've really enjoyed the chorus program, and um, some of the opportunities that I've had that I really enjoyed is the districts in SEMSPA that's also available for the band. Um, that's really just an experience that um, brings like all these different, really talented people together from different towns, and I got to meet a ton of new people, and that was super fun. Another experience that I really liked was over the summer I went to England for the chorus and that was just a really great experience. I loved meeting new people. I met people I never would have thought I'd meet before. It was such a great experience. And actually on Wednesday the chorus is going to go to the Fenway Park and actually sing the national anthem on the field at Fenway Park. And then in a few, a few weeks later our band will actually be heading to Gillette for band day at Gillette, so they'll be on the field with the uh, UMass band day too. So a lot of opportunities both in school and out of school for both those programs. The lockers are the most exciting thing <laughs> that has ever happened to me at the school. <laughs> <laughs> because before, if your locker did lock, it took twice the time it takes now to open it. That, and you were sharing it with someone, and the lockers were like this thick and could barely fit your backpack anyway. Now they're very, now they're very deep, and um, you have your own locker. It's top and bottom though, so I end up with um, some checks mix on my head sometimes. <laughs> um, but it's also now that we have them only on one side, cleared up uh, the traffic in the hallways so much so it takes half the time to get to your classes than it did last year. And with all the new paint and new floors, it just brightens up the whole house. So yeah, you can see that these walls were that brown mustard color. Uh, and while we had the lockers down over the summer, uh, I met with the custodians and thought this was a great opportunity to, to paint the whole, you don't have to worry about cutting and pasting, the floors were off, so you really could just fly through it pretty quickly. So we were able to do all four houses and actually get it all done, so we're excited about that. So. Uh, well, most, the two main things that I, I help, and there's also a lot of language, 
which is French and Spanish. And in seventh grade, you take both French and Spanish. But in eighth grade, you can choose which you want to learn about, French or Spanish. And then there's also art and health, which is learning about those stuff. Very good, nice job. So one of the things we did this year is we uh, moved some of the curriculum around. In our sixth grade, they're actually getting Tech Ed 1 and Tech Ed 2. And in seventh grade, they're gonna get Tech Ed 1 and 2. When they were in eighth grade, the band and chorus kids couldn't get that curriculum. It's, a, it, it's an important component to uh, the science uh, curriculum. So now, all seventh and eighth, all students in the building will get that Tech Ed 1 and Tech Ed 2. And in eighth grade, we have a new program called Research, so it's where um, the librarians are actually working with students on uh, how to do research, how to find material, how to, you know, plagiarism, all the stuff that, that our, our teachers talk about kids need, particularly going off to high school and college. How do you do, how do you start a research project? How do you put it together? How do you present it? Uh, so that's a, that's a new program for our eighth grade. So um, Adam did a great job talking about just the different opportunities. Um, in seventh grade, they actually take two world languages. Um, and they take a technology course. They take a theater arts course. So it actually gets kid comfortable, uh, kids comfortable speaking in front of an audience and, and, and being confident and making eye contact. And I hope you see that some of that today when they were when they were presenting, because that's something that we try to talk about when you're when you're with someone and you're talking to someone. Is eye contact, your good posture, and that's all some of the things that are being taught in that in that theater arts course. So. Um, you know, it's great, you're in the house for the ELA, math, science, social studies, and reading, uh, and you're out, you're out, and you get that kind of time away from that classroom to learn different skills, so, good job. Okay, thank you for rejoining the school committee. Um, just for the audience that's joining us now, let's do the pledge again and start our regular meeting. the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we just came back from a really good tour of the PCIS facility. Um, we had several young students that were uh, showing us around, and um, there's a lot to show us here. They did a great job, I thought. It was very well done. This evening's meeting is going to go a little faster than originally planned because <laughs> we're going to uh, skip a few things. Um, we have um, some things that were not prepared for tonight's meeting, so we're just going to schedule them to our next meeting or a future meeting. Uh, one will be item six, which was the school improvement plan for South Elementary, and then the minutes as well. We'll just put them on the queue for the next meeting. So with that, why don't we start with, uh, is there anybody in the audience tonight that uh, would like to address the school committee? Everybody gets so serious looking when we ask that. Seeing none, we'll move on to South High School. Veronica, Hello. please. All right. Um, hello. Good evening. Um, so it's um, trying to come up with things that I didn't talk about last week. Um, I was surprised that the meetings were one right after another. That's why Brianna couldn't make it tonight. But um, just a reminder that groundbreaking at Plymouth South is this Thursday. The band and chorus will both be performing there for that band with some just a little light music in beforehand, and the chorus will be singing the national anthem. Um, also, picture day is this Friday, the next day after that, so everybody <laughs> better make sure they're dressed up, look presentable for that, because you will be stuck with your picture for the rest of the year, on your little ID <laughs> card and on Aspen, everywhere else, so it does matter. Um, also, October 14th is the PSAT and in-school SAT day. So uh, seniors have to register online for that SAT, and juniors should get a good night's sleep as well because they have to take the PSAT. Um, October 1st is open house, as I mentioned last week. That'll be, uh, that's next week. Um, and that's next Thursday, that is. Um, and our Oktoberfest for seniors is next Friday, the 2nd. So we're really excited for that. That'll be fun. Um, uh, the first school council meeting for the year is tomorrow night. Um, so I 
I'm not 100% sure everything that that entails, but I know they're meeting at students and staff members who meet with a plan for the school. Um, and Mrs. Fry had a great trip to DC, but she's very glad to be back home and back with the school. Um, fall sports are going well, the teams are doing great, and last but not least, cheer and volleyball teams both participated in a local Alzheimer's walk for their community service. So. Very good. Thank you. Maxwell for North High. Hi. Um, so I have a lengthy list tonight. Um, but to touch upon what she said about the SATs, there will be math classes held from 6 to 8 p.m. on October, f or actually on Mondays and Wednesdays, September 28th, 30th, um, and then October 5th and 7th. Critical reading and writing classes will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, September 29th, um, and October 1st, 6th, and 8th. Um, these will be in, the, in room 246 at Plymouth South. Uh, the cost will be $80 for one subject and $130 for both subjects. The SAT study guide is included in the registration fee. Um, registration can be done both at Plymouth North and Plymouth South guidance offices. The deadline is Wednesday, September 23rd, so that's tomorrow, I believe, right? Or two days uh, from now. Two days. Yeah. Today. Um, the homecoming football game will be Friday, October 2nd at 7 p.m., Plymouth North versus Hingham. The cost to enter is $5 for adults and $4 for seniors and students. Um, the homecoming dance will be Saturday, October 3rd. Tickets are $15 each or $12 plus two canned goods, and I believe they started selling them this week, and they'll go to the end of next week. Um, congratulations to Ali Guliani, I don't know how to say that one, for being chosen to speak at the Walk for Hearing in Boston on Wednesday, September 16th. Um, Ellie plays volleyball, basketball, and softball and has moderate to severe hearing loss. Ellie was runner-up for 2013 Massachusetts Hearing Aids for Children Coalition. Ellie is a captain for her team, uh, team here together. Um, so we've started a few student council meetings. We had um, a large attendance the other day. We are now holding our meetings during our directed study period. Um, we, so actually attendance has been at an all-time high already. Um, many activities are in the works and something that we were working on was pep rally because there was some controversy over when it would be either before homecoming or before Thanksgiving. And there were several surveys that were sent out and homecoming was not the option that was chosen. Um, pep rally is going to be the traditional before Thanksgiving day. Um, and they actually, they asked for people to follow um, PN Stuco on Twitter, and I think they're working on an Instagram page as well. That's all. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Anybody have uh, any old business uh, updates? Dr. Maestas, do we have any updates that you want to? I have one uh, to report on this evening. I, earlier, um, last school committee meeting, Dr. Sorensen um, asked for an update on the scholarship process. Uh, I'm working on that, and I will have that for our next meeting, okay? And um, as far as old business, that's what I have. Um, just one other point. Um, we met this week to um, discuss kindergarten options and we're working on that plan to bring to school committee. Um, I would say that by our next school committee meeting we should have somewhat of a timeline of when that information will be brought to the table, a more definite timeline, okay? okay. And it will be in, in, in line with our budget process. So we have a number of things. Good. Yeah, so we will. So um, that, that will, um, we should have some, um, like I said before, a timeline to bring uh, before the committee for planning purposes. Okay. okay? And then the, the big deliverable there, because we already have the write-up, the, yeah. so the big deliverable is just how much it's going to cost. Absolutely. And that's one thing that we're Correct. we're fumbling through the numbers. Uh, Mr. Costin uh, met Friday with a number of vendors to look at furniture. We're looking at, you know, uh, issues all over from transportation to playgrounds. So uh, we have a number of things to, to put on the table. Okay. All right. Good. New business. Anybody have any new business they'd like to add? Okay. You did? No, it's just, I was saying it's just a week ago, so it's yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's still have to ask, though. 
Dr. Maestas, your report for this evening? Yes, I have a report. Um, I have a number of things. One, uh, today um, I sent out a memo to our parents. Uh, it's also on Facebook regarding uh, traffic concerns that we have and delays on buses. I, I think uh, anyone who's traveled around Plymouth in the last few months realized that navigating the roads of Plymouth can be a challenge. That challenge is actually causing some issues with bus and tardiness of buses and things of that nature. So I sent an email out um, and a, a, a memo out to parents today that really indicated that we're really trying to work with the, these challenges and hopefully we can navigate them. And if there are issues regarding bus um, uh, tardiness, uh, the school will call uh, home letting parents know that a bus or particular buses uh, were, uh, were gonna, are going to be late. So that is in the works. Um, and keep in mind the groundbreaking is, uh, is this week and from all practical purposes or, or, or weather purposes, uh, it should be a nice day and we should uh, avoid the rain like we'd had uh, the at the time. north. Uh, uh, floated away. Gra groundbreaking years ago. Um, and um, I have two videos to show very quickly, and I know uh, Mr. Riley is prepared to show the flyover. There's a brand new flyover of Plymouth uh, South High School, so if we could show that real quickly. This is a drone of uh, the Plymouth South High School construction. We'll have uh, uh, weekly flyovers. This is a, a, a combination of Mr. the Morgan? first one. Mr. Morgan, could, could you move that flag? This is the first uh, one that we did. Thank you, you can actually see the, the condition of, of South, and this is uh, what it looked like uh, probably the first uh, couple of weeks of construction. You see the construction trailers in place. Uh, you can see South Middle, and now we go to September 16th, which uh, is the latest drone flyover, and this one actually has significant amount of excavation. We're down about 14 feet, uh, and you can see the the dirt really starting to move. Um, you, we should see significant development in the next uh, couple of weeks where foundations are, are going to start to start um, be uh, poured and, and uh, which would be a significant progress uh, on the project. So we feel uh, really good uh, where things are right now. Uh, you can see the difference in uh, a matter of 14 days. So I think things will move along very quickly. Um, it's interesting, these, the, the, this drone, you can't even uh, Tom Finnegan didn't even know that no it was flying over. It was mm -hmm. high enough, and he asked, "When are we doing the drone flyover?" I said, "Well, we already did a couple." <laughs> and the next one is a video that I have prepared for the school committee, and um, this one is probably going to shock you a little bit. But here you go. So let it roll, Dan. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and we are here at Central Office, and we were challenged by Manama Elementary School for the ice bucket challenge. And today, we're here to meet the challenge. Hi, I'm Nancy Jarkey and I work at Central Office. I accept Manamet Elementary School's Ice Bucket Challenge. Ice Bucket, Dr. Maestas and his staff have been challenged to promote awareness of ALS. I challenge our school committee to be more creative in this challenge to promote ALS. Thank you, Nancy. And to raise oh, funds. I called it. <laughs> funds. <laughs> to help find a cure. I challenge the first student bus drivers. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm challenging North High School main office secretaries. We, we challenge Oak Street facility staff. <laughs> I challenge Lynn Barrett's finance department at the uh -huh. Plymouth Town Hall. <laughs> we challenge the tech center. We challenge, we challenge the PCIS administrators. I challenge the North High and South High biomedical students. <laughs> we challenge Plymouth South Middle School. Plymouth School Committee, consider yourself challenged. It's empty. <laughs> Nicely done. That was great. That was really That's good. Great. So, um, I guess you were challenged. You can decide how you want to do that. 
So <laughs> have fun. Good. Have to do something <laughs> to top that. I'll just, just have to drink my water. Money. <laughs> 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 so you have uh, uh, basically it's a week. You know, it's really 24 hours, but Madamet gave us a week okay. to just arrange it and all that. So. It's uh, because I sent a text to Kim last night that said, I think said someone should challenge us. There you go. <laughs> and I said, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Dr. Sorensen brought up last school committee that, um, that he had this feeling during opening day that the, the, the district was a family. Well, guess what? You're part of the family. Yeah. So guess what? Now you got to be part of the challenge. So there you go. <laughs> I'll turn it over back to you, Mr. Begley. Very good. Um, I had a question on the transportation uh, yes. part that you, you mentioned at the beginning of your comments there. What parts of town specifically? Is it across town evenly? Or it's is really it north um, or more West Plymouth, North Plymouth. Um, if you follow some of the um, wastewater upgrades, um, you, you'll notice that. And then, oh, okay. Um, yeah. And also keep in mind that um, we had a. Um, um, uh, car fire on Route 3 last week, uh, which really yes, created so. uh, uh, transportation issues ac across the board. So although the transportation issues are uh, West Plymouth, North Plymouth in certain areas, but that congestion really starts to back up all the other side roads, which really puts a, um, a major um, constraint on um, on our buses because they have to go from one school to another school. So right. it's causing delays you know, you know, quite a few schools. Dr. Sorensen? On a related topic, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, the transportation in and out of West School and probably many of the schools mm -hmm. uh, at pickup time and, and drop off time, very congested, mm -hmm. verges, on the, verges on being dangerous mm -hmm. at times because of the way. So we had a presentation here maybe eight or nine, ten months ago about mm -hmm improving parking at Plymouth West School. Mm -hmm. I have never heard another word about that since then. Yeah, the um, parking at Plymouth West, there was a uh, request for capital alley to actually enhance the parking there. And I think that's a, a continual desire of the administration at West. Keep in mind that all our satellite schools have the same exact parking configuration. Yeah, so right. it, is, it is really uh, a, con a, a major concern at all of our schools. So um, uh, parking always seems to be, and, and traffic flow seems to be a problem at those schools. So it's something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that will continually be brought up under capital outlay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Yes, Ms. Badger. Just a quick question on the groundbreaking. Where do we meet for that? Do what you'll do is you'll park. Um, the best thing to do is park at um, South Middle School okay. on the far end of the parking lot, on the on the uh, 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 you know north end of that parking lot, okay. and then you can just walk right into the construction, okay. and and you'll walk into that entrance there. But it'd be the best, okay. easy and easy out. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we don't have any retirements to report no, tonight. We don't. Correct. And uh, correspondence. I think we have one, yep. uh, Ms. Hunt. There's one piece of correspondence tonight, a thank you letter from the South Shore Community Action Council, Executive Director Patricia Daly, to Social Studies Coordinator Kathy Babini, in recognition of the large donation by the teaching staff on opening day, 570 pounds of food for the local food distribution center. Ms. Daly went on to say that the Community Action Council has distributed more than a million pounds to food assistance programs such as the Council on Agent on aging to supplement the Meals on Wheels program. Families and Head Start program, women, infants, and children program, as well as low income senior and family housing communities. Dr. Babini shared that this year's donation surpassed last year's by some 23 pounds and continues to increase, in, to increase year over year. Very good, thank you. Now we have one of our, uh, our actually our only presentation for tonight for about the uh, Shishikahama Japan trip and Dr. Maestas if you'd like to yes tonight we are uh, honored to have uh, some special guests uh, in attendance we have a number of students that attended the 25th anniversary of the relationship between Shishikahama and Plymouth which is a, a, a monumental opportunity um, from all um, accounts this was a great opportunity for our students 
And from my understanding, they, they were absolutely incredible ambassadors for this community. So at this point, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Liz Rio, teacher at South Middle School, Joe Murphy, assistant principal at Plymouth South Middle School, uh, Mr. John Mahoney, uh, to come on up if they would like to come up. And I, I know we have Josh Rio, who was a, a volunteer who went uh, to um, supply his support during uh, the time. And, and then, um, Ms. Badger, we can get you a chair and you can sit with everybody. Uh, Ms. Badger was the school committee representative on uh, the visit. So I know you all have some, some great uh, words to, to share with our committee. And then I know our students probably want to have a few words in as well. So I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Badger, is that? Yes, okay, great. perfect. Um, I just wanted to start off, I mean, the kids are gonna have a, a better explanation and they, for the trip and how much they got out of it. But I just wanted to say that, I mean, we had a phenomenal experience I think it was life-changing for a lot of the students giving them the opportunity to get to another country and at their age is fantastic and just the experiences we had but um, I'm not gonna take too much time and I'll just turn it over to Joe and um, Liz um, I was uh, able to become part of this trip uh, at one of the, at, I guess the latter stages of it and uh, I was pleasantly surprised by not just the organization behind the trip but also um, the students that sele were selected um, when we're talking about representing Plymouth and having that cultural exchange I think that the panel of people uh, chose uh, wonderful kids they really represented the community and really made made me feel like I was proud to be from Plymouth. So I just wanted to add that piece in. Yeah, Gary, I think you hit the nail right on the head. You, know, you, you used the term ambassador. They were wonderful ambassadors. I don't think we had a problem all week with any of them. And um, uh, if we did, I didn't hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, obviously the, uh, the hospitality, the Japanese is second to none. The trip, and I believe you're gonna see a few slides in, in a second, um, you know, the cross section of the sites and places that we went to you know ran the gamut mm. of uh you know japanese society and it, you know it was a wonderful trip and you know these children were you know very lucky to have gone over well is this working Shoot. check there you go. Yeah. thank yeah. you um <laughs> Just like um, everyone just said here, we we're so extremely proud of the students that um, were ambassadors for the trip to Shishikahama. They made us incredibly um, just humbled by how they behaved and how kind they were and gracious. And we'd actually like for about half of them to come up and talk about some of their experience while we show the slides. And um, would you? Boys and girls would like come up, please. Um, we have about half of the students here that were on the trip to Shishikahama. Um, the people that are not here, the students that are not here this evening due to other um, uh, commitments that they had are Garen Anderson, Maeve Horn, Owen St. Aubin, Jasper Stronzel, Andrea Sweeney, and Jeremy Whiting. And they were a great, great, great addition as all of these students are. So I'm going to hand the microphone around so that you can introduce yourselves and you can come a little closer, don't worry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Quinn Thomas Mezleski. Um, I'm in eighth grade and I'm 13. Hi, I'm Justin Fosdick. I go to PCIS and I'm in eighth grade. Hi, I'm Marley Hunt. Uh, I go to Plymouth North and I'm a freshman. Hello, I'm Emily. I'm a freshman and I go to Plymouth North. Plymouth North. Hi, I'm Gracie, and um, I'm in eighth grade, and I go to PCIS. So um, Michelle has kindly put a um, PowerPoint together for us, and we thought, what better way to explain the experience of the trip than have the kids do it themselves? Um, so, with no further ado. Am I doing this right, Nance? Point it over there. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't the girls, why don't the two girls standing behind stand behind the boys so you can see your kimono? Uh, Molly. Yeah, come, on, come over here. Molly's not listening. Yeah, she's not. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, yeah, right. Stay down there so they can see your uh, kimono and there things. You go. Yeah, that's, there you right. go. that's good. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. 
<coughs> Just do it manually. Oh, there, there we go. go. Look at that. Thank you, Kristen. So we made it. Um, we have, <laughs> it was quite, quite a long uh, plane ride. And we thought that maybe Grace and Quinn would talk about that a little bit. Um, Gracie? Yep, right here. Uh. Uh, Gracie's, uh, Gracie's here. Uh, it was 13 hours long, <laughs> so really long. But everybody was very polite. And they basically, like, they would, like, if you made a mistake or did something wrong, they would, like, make it feel like it was their fault. And they were, like, just uh -oh. so nice uh -huh. about everything. Oh my God, um, okay, so the plane trip itself was a fun time, but an extremely long time. Um, they had lots of things to do for you on the plane, and like uh, they served you two meals, and the meals themselves were actually pretty good. Um, they served Ben and Jerry's ice cream, so I was pretty thrilled about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the plane trip was a fun time, but a very long time. <laughs> and overall, the flight attendants accustomed you very well. And I thought that the plane trip was a great way to like s smooth into Japanese culture because the the flight attendants would like they kind of speak American, but it wasn't. Sorry, English, <laughs> but it wasn't like it was. It wasn't the best English, and overall, I think the flight was pretty good. Thank you, Quinn. Yeah. Um, next slide, please. Oh, it's not people. Is it working. Oh, terrific. Um, and so the welcome ceremony. I was thinking that Emily and Marley could talk a little bit about that. Um, it was quite an event. So. Um, well, when we, like, we got off the bus and, like, everyone was, like, standing, like, all, like, the official people, and they were all clapping, and, like, it made you feel like you were, like, really special, and, like, <laughs> like I don't know, it was kind of, like, overwhelming, because, like, we just got there, and we're on, like, a really long flight, and just, like, everyone was, like, clapping, and I don't know, it was kind of cool, though, because, like, it made you feel, like, important, and Cool. Wonderful. And um, they talked a little bit about the tsunami. They went over um, their recovery and things like that. You want to just add a little bit for us, Em? Um, so we walked in, and we walked through all these clapping, wicked, smiley people. <laughs> and then we go into this room, and they start talking and welcoming us. And they, they're all so nice. And they like talk about the tsunami. And it's so sad just to think about how that happened. But they've recovered so much, and it's just amazing. Mm. Awesome. Thank you, Em. Some pictures of the update on the tsunami recovery. <coughs> and um, that day, they, they also, after the ceremony, um, they brought us out to see some of the devastation that they're still working on and the recovery and what it looked like before. and. They really, um, I believe, gave the, the students a, a very strong understanding of what they had gone through. Does anyone want to say anything about the, that day? Just one thing on this is mm. they, they've created, you know, the whole, they're so welcoming and so community oriented. They've created housing that is attached, like the housing on the, on the right over here, they're attached. There's other homes there and they're all attached to create that community kind of sense that if there's a disaster or something like that, that they can, they know that they're to check on somebody else. And that's the same way with the apartment complexes too. So mm. I found that, Especially for the elderly. yeah, it was yeah. very, you know, inspiring in a way. Like we should probably care about our neighbors a little bit more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The Plymouth House. Um, uh, would you like to say something about the Plymouth House? So the Plymouth House was a really accurate representation of the fort we have here in Plymouth. And it had a really a lot of old relics, it had some newspapers, it had some really cool models of the Mayflower and some towns. <coughs> it was actually 
really well air conditioned for a wood building. <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't hot. mention that they were going through a heat wave, so it was well over a hundred degrees for the humidity. And thank goodness they're a, a culture of fans because mm-hmm. I tell ya, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it came it was, in handy. It was really hot a lot of the time. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, the Shishikahama History Museum, um, Grace and Quinn, if you'd like to say a few words on that. Okay, I guess I, I, guess I will speak. Um, so the Shishikahama History Museum was, it was wicked fun. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the thing that I liked most about the Shishikahama History Museum is that they had relics from like 6,000 years ago. And I was like crazed about that because I thought Plymouth was old because we're gonna have the 400th anniversary. <laughs> but then they were like, "Oh uh, yeah, it's from like 6,000 years ago." And I was like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's like a long time ago." <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, like after we went through the tour of the museum, which is most of it was actually really cool, uh, we made these cool necklaces that they're like half of a yin yang, and uh, they were like awesome. Some of the <laughs> Some of the um, the models that they had, like they looked like they were actually like <coughs> genuine like top notch jewelry, <laughs> and then I tried to make one and it didn't come out like top notch jewelry, <laughs> and so overall it was a, it was a, the, this was one of my highlights of the tour because um, it was like it was hot in there trust me and <laughs> thank God we had our fans but overall it was like a great history of Shishigahama. Mm. and awesome. you got to touch those six thousand year old things right but, uh, yeah. some of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. The welcome dinner and show. Um, we were thinking, Emily and Marley, would you like to say a few words? It's a pretty big evening. So for a little while before the dinner, we were all just sitting in this room, just anticipating our new host families. And we walk in, and there's all these people, and you sit down with your family, and there's not really any other people near you. Like, I was at the same table with Marley, but she was, like, on the other side of the table. So you're just talking with your host family, trying to get to know them. I was shaking so hard. (laughs) I was so nervous. But I'm, the bottom picture on the left is me and my host family. And they were so nice. Like, after 15 minutes of getting to know them, the littlest girl, Mashi, who was four years old, took me and started playing tag with me and was just tickling me, and she was the cutest thing ever. And I miss her already. And the dance and the show was so amazing. They were all so good at dancing, and it was just really cool. One thing I would like to mention is there is a huge um, communication barrier they don't speak any English. Um, some of you already know that, but it, it, so they there was a lot of body language and pointing and you know charading and um, it, it, but it, it worked out just as as beautifully as as if you were communicating just naturally. So probably a little more fun too. <laughs> um, well, like what Emily said, it was kind of like scary because there was like a really big communication kind of block and they would like ask you like you were like sitting at the table and they'd ask you what you wanted and I don't know I felt like I just had to say yes to everything because like (laughs) I didn't want to like not take something and like be offended like offend them and I don't know it was really like awesome like to meet them and because they were so like welcoming and like loving almost like on like the first day when you meet them and I don't know, it was really cool mm. um and one thing that wasn't mentioned is they completely left all of us and went alone to their host family and not knowing these people and meeting them for the first time so pretty amazing feat to do that at middle school age um so proud of them to be able to handle that and do it so well the picnic um, I, I do need for you guys to talk about this a little bit more, too, because for me, you were one of the highlights carrying around that little girl. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so, I, I must have taken 50 pictures of you. Um, so if you guys want to talk a little bit more about the picnic, anyone else can chime in, too, of course. Okay. 
Um, well, there was this little girl, and she wasn't in my host family, or Emily's, or Andrea, who's the other girl there, and Gracie. Um, but she like really like clung on to us, and like I don't know, it, she like we didn't know her at all. We didn't like we weren't living with her or anything, and she just like followed us around, and it was really cool because she just like she like we didn't speak the same language or anything, but. She just like stuck by us and like we like played with her and stuff and she was really cute. Um, <laughs> uh, they had and pizza and yeah. lots of- They had like very American food at that picnic. And, and what about the- um, Watermelons. Yeah, the watermelon Emily. smashing. <laughs> Emily, <laughs> give it to Emily. Yeah. Emily can tell you all about that. Um, so we were, it was kind of like a pinata, but it was a watermelon on the ground and I had like a piece of wood and they would put a blindfold on you and you would have to walk and when people in Japanese are yelling at you to go left or to go right you don't know what they're saying <laughs> <laughs> so you're just walking in circles and somehow I managed to hit it and I broke it open and that was really <laughs> cool because everyone started cheering and I didn't understand what was going on because I still had my blindfold on but it was amazing. Everything about it was just perfect. I'm happy to say everyone, all the kids participated in the Congo Japanese line. Oh. Mm -hmm. John. <laughs> oh, even John Mahoney. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a video of that. Yes, there was. There is a video out there. There is a video. And, and Josh coordinated his outfit with the little girl oh, right yeah. there. They have the same shorts. They match. Oh, look at that. That's great. <laughs> The thermal and solar power plant, um, Justin and Quinn, would you like to say some words? Gracie, chime in anytime you like, okay? Okay, so the thermal and solar power plant was like really cool because um, their solar farm was just massive. It was just like huge in general. It was like, there must have been like a hundred solar panels by like 10. And that's like a th once you th you think about it, and it looks big, but you think it's not that much. But mm -hmm. overall, it's like a thousand solar panels, mm. and they're they're like wicked big by themselves. And that day was like the hottest day, and we were, we had to stand out in the sun the whole time with the solar panels. And so some of us like went almost underneath the solar panels for shade, cool. and it was like really cool. And then finally we got to the top of the um the thermal plant. And the view it was there was incredible. You could see um, you could see the sea, tons of um, parts of Shishigahama, and it was just like an amazing view. Yeah, the view you could see almost all of Matsushima and the whole bay, really. Um, but I've I've personally have never been in a power plant, <laughs> thermal, solar, nuclear, coal. But it was really cool. It was kind of loud in the room in the power plant it was even hotter in there <laughs> it, was, it was really really hot but the solar farm like Quinn said it was massive they I feel like there were 10,000 solar panels it was so big but it was really fun to see a power plant but it's not something you get to do every day mm. thank you John want to say a few words uh, thank you so Gas-fired plant, and um, obviously the, the mix on energy in um, New England is becoming less diversified because we're going towards natural gas. And so a 450 megawatt plant, uh, fully automated, only uh, 45 to 50 employees. Before we went on the tour, we went into a debriefing room, and we saw a, lot, a, a video of that day in March of 11 when the tsunami came in, and the plant is right on the ocean. Um, all the employees went up to the third floor. Uh, they were videotaping the tsunami coming in and what, what they were witnessing was something that was occurring once every thousand years. And the first floor was devastated, mostly administrative offices and um, things of that nature. When you leave the building or enter the building, they have a, a giant gauge in the side of the building now where it shows where the water level hit, which was uh, five meters. Uh, the generator is uh, 15 meters above ground, which is about 45 feet. And um, Josh and I took a photo of ourselves standing in front of the, you know, the with the water, you know, 17 or 18 feet off the ground. And 
you watched the video, it came into the parking lot, um, you know, slowly, almost in slow motion, picked up all the uh, cars and just shifted them away and the entire place was flooded for about an hour before the water receded back into the ocean. They lost one person that day at the plant. Wow. And there was like a, was it 80 of them spent three days on the third floor, I think it was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shrine. Did you see the shrine? Did they have a shrine in there? There was a shrine. When I visited, there was a shrine that we saw in there. Oh. Yeah. I did see the shrine. Yeah. Yes. Yes, on the wall. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. Matsushima, boys. So, Matsushima is an island off <clears throat> the coast of Shishikahama, and it wasn't hit very, very hard um, from the tsunami because. It was, it's protected by all of these little islands that aren't really inhabited, but, and then there's Shishikahama off to the side out here. Um, but there was a really, a really cool temple there. A uh, Buddhist temple, I think. Shinto, Shinto have shrines, Buddhists have temples. And so the temple was old and it was halfway under construction that was almost a good thing because we got to go into a room and see a shrine or a statue that hadn't been seen since 1300 BC or AD, not BC. <laughs> and I thought that was that was really cool. And there were lots of little and large gold statues that represented um, emperors and people that were there. They were sort of graves to represent them okay so i think justin got like the whole temple part like pretty much down pat <laughs> um they, they were doing construction there and it was cool because like out of one of the windows we got to see an area that hadn't been seen for the public like justin said for like a long time and then after we went to the temple we got some crazy ice cream flavor flavors and uh one of them was jellyfish ice cream and once you ate it, like you would think it's just well, but it was it was better than you would think it is. <laughs> and um, it's funny because the ice cream they have there is made like more of milk and not more of sugar, and so like you could taste it, and it tasted more like milk than ice cream, and it it was a little odd at first, but then I got used to it. <laughs> really good overall. Yeah. <laughs> ice cream's ice cream. <laughs> Anything to add, girls? All right, so John, um, w w for the Sendai uh, Tanabata Festival, we all were on our own and went our own ways. So um, John will talk a little bit about their experience. Um, some of the kids were able to go also, um, but not all of them. It was depending on what their host family wanted to do or what they wanted to do with their host family. Uh, so the f four of us went in. Uh, to Sendai one day, we uh, kind of uh, we took the subway in, uh, walked around the city for a while in the uh, Tanabata Festival. Um, you know, very crowded um, marketplace, and you know I don't know what the name is of those uh, things that are hanging above us, but uh, there was a competition, and as you walk down the, you know, the walkway there every uh, 20 to 25 feet, and these it's a con these are judged, and then you. You know, basically there throughout the thoroughfare on both sides of the main, the main roadways through Sendai and um, very crowded and very festive atmosphere. Great, thank you. <laughs> Shishikahana Annual Festival, um, Emily and Marley, this is where they debuted their kimonos. <laughs> Talk a, a little bit about that. It was really like hard to walk in because they're really tight and very different from what we're used to wearing. So it was kind of difficult, but it was pretty cool wearing them because like a lot of other like girls were wearing them too. So like it was like you fit in, mm. and it was like you like became part of their culture. And where did you get the kimono? Um, I went to the mall, and there's like a store there, and. Yeah, I went to the mall too. Okay. 
Did did you buy the kimono though, or did was it a gift? It was a gift. It was a gift. Gift. A gift. Yeah. <laughs> and they let you go, and they they brought you, and they wanted you to pick out the one that you liked. Or? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And like they like tried it on us like in the store. Well, yeah. mine did. Mine yeah. Did too. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. That day. That was the day we did karaoke, right? Yeah. A little bit before we were me, Marley, Jeremy, and karaoke. I think that's Garen. Uh, we all went to a karaoke bar kind of place. <laughs> and it was like no drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. None of that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah. So yeah, we go in thing. and they had like all these songs. They didn't just have like Japanese songs that we were thinking that we were gonna they were gonna like try and get us to sing. But they had like every song, like they had literally everything they had like high school musical (laughs) and everything and then my family left and they just pulled into a mall and i didn't know what was happening so they brought me up and they were like buy kimono and i was like okay so they Mm -hmm. let me pick this one i tried it on and then we went home the great grandmother of or just the grandmother of the family like put it on me and at first, I was like, this is amazing. And then a little bit through the night, I was like, oh, my God, I'm sweating. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> and the shoes are, like, wooden. The shoes hurt after a while. But it was worth it because you just felt so, like, amazing because so many people there were wearing them. Like, mm. even, like, little girls were wearing them, and they just looked so cute. And it was just amazing. You both looked so beautiful, really. Thank really you. so beautiful. The Sendai Temple, John, could you talk about that? Why don't you read the well, prayer? <laughs> I don't know, if, see if I retain the whole thing. This is, so you, you, you go to the Buddhist temple, Sendai Temple, and um, there are different ways. Uh, I think there's one way which we were shown how to make a prayer, um, which we did, and then uh, towards the end, you go over to this wall and you... Um, you make a contribution, and you're given like a little piece of pine, um, and then you put that hanging on the wall. And you know, obviously, the uh, the prayer or the uh, wish we wish for was you know continued long lasting friendship between you know Plymouth and the uh, Shishigahama, uh, Japan. And uh, for some reason, I was required to put my address and the date down. Yeah. <laughs> I we can't explain that, but it is what it is. <laughs> The Super Kids Orchestra. Guys, do you want to talk about that? (coughs) (laughs) So this was an amazing show. I mean, these guys must have practiced three hours a day constantly (laughs) because um, they were... I, I was blown away at how amazing they were. I mean, our strings in Plymouth are pretty good, yeah. but I mean, they make our ba- our strings look like they're just trying for the first time. <laughs> I mean, it was truly amazing. And the picture up there is Noah high-fiving the conductor because he went up and got to conduct, um, I think it was, uh, the fur release, I don't know, not sure, <laughs> but it was really cool to see how much they practiced and how much dedication they had into playing this. Awesome. The 25th anniversary dinner, um, I thought maybe John might say a few words and anyone that is interested in <coughs> talking about that, maybe Joe? I can tell you for one, for certain. I don't think all the kids ate their octopus. <laughs> I don't think anybody had time to eat anything. I mean, it was so much com- like communication. It, not obviously not speaking to one another, but yeah. It was uh, it was held in the uh, uh, you know a downtown um, hotel. It was on a Sunday night, and uh, the individual you see up there on the left, um, you know, holding the oil painting with me is uh, Mayor uh, Yoshio Watanabe. 
and he was uh, a month away from completing his fourth, uh, his third four-year term, uh, going into retirement after 12 years. He came over in 1989 to Plymouth. He was part of the search committee that came over to, um, I guess, look at uh, at our uh, credentials as a sister city candidate. And he has been involved in the relationship for uh, you know for the for the whole 25 years, and obviously the last half is the mayor. So um, once again, the hospitality. Uh, there was roughly 140 people in the ballroom, and um, you know it was an honor and privilege for myself to uh, you know represent the community and uh, and you know lead this delegation over there. It was just a fantastic experience. One of the one of the big takeaways I got. Um particularly from the night of the 25th anniversary dinner was um, just how serious that the, the Shishikahama community takes this relationship. And, uh, you know, I think for those of us who were there, we were able to witness that by um, the vast variety of delegates that they had there, uh, people from education, people from the municipalities. They have uh, sister cities within their own country. They invited those delegates in. And um, I think we were lucky enough not just to participate in the ceremonial piece uh, that evening, but also uh, to just sit down and have some good, rich conversations with people that have interests in building cultural bridges like we do. And uh, also, um, I, can talk, I can talk about myself personally, they seated me with other people that were in education, so we had some good, rich education con uh, conversations. I know John was sitting with people that uh, are you know, in the political realm there, and so uh, it was nice to be able to trade some ideas and pick their brain, and they picked ours, and uh, it was a wonderful night. It really was. Terrific. The Shishikahama Middle School Tour and Art Class, I personally loved. Um, Marley and Emily, would you like to? What did you think of the school? Um, the school was really, it was a lot different than like the schools in Plymouth. It was like really open and they had like a lot of like windows. So it was like a lot of like natural sunlight. And I don't know, it was like, it was kind of the same, but then not. Mm. Like their rooms kind of looked like a normal classroom. <coughs> I don't know, it was like kind of different. But the painting we had to do, um, well, for me, it was very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great artist. Oh. <laughs> um, I think I might have, like, done some disgrace to that painting. No. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, like, really cool because it was, like, ink. So, you know, like, just, like, this, like, brush, and, like, you kind of just, like, had to go with, like, the flow. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. Um, the painting was way harder than I thought it was going to be because you had to like make sure you were doing the right pressure or it would just like bleed everywhere but Marley's didn't turn out that well <laughs> <laughs> mine turned out like a little better <laughs> Gracie's came but out really after nice after yeah. we were allowed we were like allowed to just like play with the brushes and we got to keep them we got to keep our little brushes and I ended up going to the 100 yen store and buying a small calligraphy set that I have yet to use, but I'm mm -hmm. very excited to use. But we, like, it was very different because when we walked into the school, uh, it was kind of like cubbies where you put your shoes and you put on their special slippers that were like difficult to walk in. Mm. But it was just very clean and very open and like sunny, and it was very pretty. So, great. What do we learn about lunch? Anybody remember? I know that was a shocker for a lot of people. She wants to talk about it. She has oh, oh, Gracie. Oh, Gracie. Gracie. About lunch. Okay, so um, everybody's supposed to bring stuff for lunch and. Um, uh, um, all the students bring stuff for lunch to make lunch there, and they have it in the classroom with the teachers. Mm -hmm. if so, it's like one student will like bring the rice, and one student will like bring the other stuff, and so yeah. Yeah. So they all they all actually all cook together, which is kind of neat. Everyone brings a, a piece of the meal, and they put it together. And then. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, then another thing, Gary, is um, all the floors are wooden, and they don't allow shoes or um, any kind of, uh, you know, sneakers in the building. So because of that, they say their schools on average last about 15 years longer than ours. Uh, so you might want to think about that when you build your next school. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to say something? Uniform also, um, they told us the way they keep their schools clean is they have the students clean them. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was just going to ask. <laughs> no custodians. No. The kids Think clean up. New business. Yep. No, just Every day. <laughs> Students. I thought that was funny. I think you should be the ambassador here for that. <laughs> you have to clean the schools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to hand this one over to either John or Joe as well. The aquarium and rotary dinner. Well, probably the rotary dinner anyways. Rotary dinner is called John. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> So the, the last night we were there, we went out on a high note, and um, might have been a higher note if I was uh, there was any video to be played. But anyways, the Rotary hosted us. Oh. Um, um, Josh and Lizzie uh, missed that. It was quite a night, but uh, there was about thirty to forty Rotarians that ho hosted us for a dinner, and then they brought in, I believe, the uh, Sendai Five, which was uh, Sendai Venture, which was the yeah, name of a band, and uh, they were wonderful and. Um, I was coaxed up to the microphone to sing a Beatles song. <laughs> <laughs> That's on video too, so. Oh, um, <laughs> um, how about the aquarium? I didn't uh, stay for the show. We didn't stay for the, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the aquarium was actually really good. And the aquarium itself, um, yeah, it was huge in general. Um, they did have lots of stuff. Um, it w it wasn't like the New England Aquarium up in Boston, because in the New England Aquarium they have tons of tiny exhibits and like a couple big ones. But most of the exhibits in the aquarium that we went to were like big exhibits. There was one tank that was like uh, probably like 50 feet by like 20 or 30 feet. And it was like probably 30 feet deep, and there was like tons of about I would say there's about 250 fish, and like 10 types of sharks, like five types of eels. And they had tons of things, and um, the room itself was just like massive. They had to have two floors for it, and um, you got to like see it like first when you walk in and when you end on the second floor. And one of the highlights for the trip was the dolphin show, because the dolphin show was just like amazing. The dolphins themselves, one of the dolphins, as you can see on one of the photos, the um, there's like a red balloon that they have, and one of the dolphins like jumped up, and this this is like 20 feet up, jumped up, did like a backflip, and hit it with his tail, and it was just amazing. It was incredible. Also, like Quinn was saying, they didn't have a lot of large exhibits they they had a lot of large exhibits <laughs> they had a lot of small exhibits too they had it felt like there were two floors for each um there was everything was packed in really it was small 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 huge small 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 and they had like the there had corners like there was a jellyfish room it was over in the side but then next to that they had the big tank and then next to that they had 30 more jellyfish and everything was so neatly packed in and organized i thought it was it was really crazy <laughs> was that in Shichigahama itself or was Sendai. that in one of the surrounding yes. towns it was in Sendai. it oh, just Sendai. opened right on yeah, the I've never yeah. Been to that. it had just like literally it only been curious yes. that it had only been open for probably what did they say like less than a month yeah. Yeah. oh cool. okay yeah. that's why we missed it yeah. <laughs> it's spectacular you must have missed Anyone it else? too mm -hmm. <laughs> This was a sad and hard day. The goodbye ceremony in the airport. Um, you can all say a little bit about that day. Want to start with Emily and go around? That was amazingly sad. It was awful. Well, like good, but um, 
when the first two days you're counting down the days so you get to go home and see your parents but then the last two days you're like give me another month like, i want to <laughs> be here forever but when you have two little girls who are crying and hugging you at the airport it's just not it's so sad like i i cried on the plane it was just and my host mom gave me like a letter i actually have it with me but it's like i hope you had fun in japan and she wrote it in english and it's like she said don't don't open it till you're on the plane and she like gave me her email address and i've emailed her and she hasn't emailed me yet back yet but i'm just so excited for her to email me back and it was just ama- an amazing experience yeah like i don't know what emily said like the first like couple of days were like like really bad like you just like wanted to go home and you're really homesick and then it's like you finally like like felt like you were at home with them and then you had to leave and it's like you wanted more time because you didn't get to like do everything you wanted to do with them because like you just got to like really know them and you would know how to communicate with them well so like I don't know and the plane like in the airport was like so sad we were at the Coxamora and we were on the bus and my host mom was like right outside the bus and then she just was like staring at me and started crying and like it was so sad and then like the when when we got to the airport, they like came to the airport, and they we were like leaving, like going through security, and the mom just started crying, and then the little girl started crying, and then like the dad started crying, and it was so sad, and so everyone was just crying, and I cried too on the plane, and I don't know, it was such like an amazing experience that you didn't want to leave, and yeah. My experience at the goodbye ceremony and at the airport, um, luckily, like, those two, my family didn't cry, because if they did, I would have cried, too. <laughs> um, but my family, uh, they went to the actually went to the airport with us, like, not on the bus, but in their separate car. And they were, like, there, and they sent, they sent us off goodbye. And they had this cool thing uh, where it was, like, a window, and there was a phone on each side. And... Uh, if you like picked up a phone on one side and yeah. your host family picked up the phone on the other side, you could, like still talk to them. And it was like it was an amazing like experience because uh, I, there was a luckily I stayed with my host family, who had a kid who was exactly my age, and we had like the same exact likes, we liked the same exact foods, we played the same exact sports. It was it worked out like perfectly, and uh, we pretty much said like the exact same things when we said goodbye. Um, and then there was one kid who uh been saying some very inappropriate words to us <laughs> the whole trip. And um he like uh Japanese words. Yeah. Yeah, in Japanese. In Japanese. And uh he like he picked up the phone and uh when Jeremy was talking to was gonna talk to his uh uh his host family and he just like he picked up the phone said a very naughty word and just dropped the phone <laughs> and walked away and it was it was one of the highlights of the trip that, 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 that was like the funniest part of the whole trip <laughs> All right, next. Uh, yeah. Yeah. um so my family didn't go to the airport but they when they said goodbye at the Kotsaimara my family consisted of a mother father and then a do- two daughters, which were, I think they were around 30, some maybe late 20s. And one of the daughters had a little boy, and she was married. And he was a month, uh, a year, and I think two months. And so when we were leaving, he was waving goodbye. I didn't really think he knew what it meant, but he started crying. Oh. And he was bawling his eyes out, so then the mother started crying. And then the daughter started crying. <laughs> Father, I think, was working, so he couldn't make it. But everyone in my family was crying. <laughs> it was awful. And we drove away, and I was like, bye. <laughs> it was so bad because, like they, everyone has said, you first two days, you want to leave. The last two days, you want to stay for another month. And Noah, who I stayed with, went, when we went through the airport, 
they actually had to drive all the way out of the airport and come and give Noah his camera, which he had forgotten in our room that we stayed in. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. So we get to say one more goodbye before we got on the plane and left. <laughs> yeah, maybe she could, maybe we'll hear a bit of that on that, I'm wondering. Um, yeah, so there definitely wasn't enough time because as soon as you got like used to like talking to them and got all comfortable with them, like yay, and then <laughs> then you had to like get like ripped away from them, and it was so sad because everybody was crying at the airport. My family didn't cry, be I don't, be but they were definitely sad. I hope at least, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was too, and yeah, I was just really sad to leave, and I didn't want to go. I agree with the feeling of being ripped away almost. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very difficult day for everyone, but at the same time we all felt so blessed, at least I speak for myself, it was, um, you know, relationships that formed that you'll have for the rest of your life. You know, we're, Josh and myself are almost in daily contact with our host family, and, um, you know, uh, in fact, they just sent us a care package, and this is Bokipu, who is the mascot we, we, we love our mascots now. Uh -huh. um, the mascot for Shishikahama, who um, created this, was Ben. Um, yeah, wow. so you'll cool. see a lot of him around mm -hmm. when you when you go to visit. Thank you. Thank you. So, th the last um, slide that we have is they actually you know how long it takes to go through an airport, especially when you're traveling. Um, actually, we're we're going domestic then, but it takes a very long time. They went up on top of the, um, where, you know, the airport itself. What is that called? The roof. Roof. Oh. <laughs> roof. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> in Japanese, please. Um, they were up on top of the roof, waving goodbye as we we're taking off in the plane. Wow. They told us that we were, they were going to the roof, and we were like, okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> and they're like, maybe you'll see us. And we're like, okay. And then we got on the plane and we look out the window and there they are right there like everyone's waving it was an hour and a half later it I was mean, just it amazing the connection that you could make in such a short period of time and not even understanding the language you could really see how much I mean from this just display of affection how much they really value our relationship and it was it was a really cool thing to witness absolutely John I just wanted to say that you know you look around the world and obviously there's a lot going on that um, doesn't sit well with various countries, but I think when Albert Thompson and the rest of the board in 1990 entered into this relationship, they, they began a 25-year process that is a role model for, you know, other communities and other countries to emulate because uh, there is a lot good about this, this relationship and there's no reason why it shouldn't continue for another 25 or 50 years and, um, you know, I. Uh, they were referencing it. Some of them people were referencing it as a once-in-a-lifetime trip, but you know, I, I'd, I'd go back in two or four years in a heartbeat if I had the opportunity. But I appreciate your time, Dennis. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Good, thank you. Amazing. Can I ask some questions? Please, please. I was just curious. What did you guys feel about, uh, you know, like sitting with your families, your, your host families, and just watching TV at night or, or whatever entertainment they did at night? How did you blend in with the culture and... Yeah, so um, the first night that me and my host family like actually watched TV together, um, my host mother got us sushi, and after we ate, they had a television, and uh, we watched baseball because the family was big baseball fans, and I'm a big baseball fan. And so I got to see uh, how like similar but different our two baseballs are, and... Overall, it just like kind of became a custom. Like every night, we just watch baseball, <laughs> and um, sometimes in like the morning before we had to leave to go to the Kokusaimura or something, we'd watch like kids' television shows because they had a, a little eight-year-old who like liked to watch the shows, and it was funny because uh, they look nothing like the Dora or stuff that we have here, and uh, um, it was kind of like hard because they were all like watching and they understood it and I, I all I saw was like some tigers just going like 
<laughs> and I, it was like it was really odd. But then eventually I just started like kind of getting into it. But overall, it was kind of confusing. But <laughs> after a couple of days, you got you kind of got used to it. Uh, the first night with my host family was we had like really big dinner. We had. I don't know what it was. It was sort of like a gray meat with, um, it, it was kind of gray with flakes, like fish flakes. It was delicious. It tasted so good. And by then it was like nine o'clock because we had been talking and like trying to explain stuff and talking with each other about like what we liked what we liked to do and by then it was nine o'clock and everyone was tired so we went so Noah and I we got up to our room I was sharing a host family with him because they didn't have any children of their own but um the first night was really interesting because I fell right asleep and I usually don't do that in different places I have sort of anxiety about sleeping in other places and I fell right asleep I was felt very welcome there. Good. Marley didn't. Good on oh. you. Oh, yeah. um, Josh, do you want to say something? So definitely the highlight for me, um, and we had a great host family and are so grateful for our experience, but um, the last night we were there, they did a tremendous feast for us of sushi and everything you can imagine and very Japanese and very authentic. I mean, it covered a, this table. And then... Um, we did uh, three generations. So it was the uh, parents of the host family, their children, and then their grandchildren. And they had karaoke in their home. So we <laughs> had a huge karaoke party in their house. And um, Liz did a rendition of, um, uh, is it Let It Go from Frozen? That I think they're still <laughs> yes. talking about. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> but, uh, so did Miss Badger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So, but, so that was true. They loved their karaoke. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we experienced the only the first song thing. we could figure out. We were like, oh, okay. Now my husband plays it for me every morning before I go to school. The we watch like the same show like every night, and the acting was really different there. Like, I don't know. It was so like, I don't know. I don't want to say it was like bad, but it was like really different from what we were so it's kind of funny and I'd be like laughing at it and they would just like look at me because like it wasn't <laughs> something funny but it was just like it was like the same show like every night so like I kind of like caught on with it and like I could like end up watching it and then one time we watched this really really strange like cartoon thing I don't even know what it was but they would just like go around and it was like a shirt and then like the thing would come off the shirt and be alive <sighs> and walk around and I don't know, it was really strange. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, yeah. they like, yeah. liked that a lot. And yeah. Um, my first night was pretty terrifying, but the first thing we did before we even went home, we went to a Japanese Walmart, which was cool. And <laughs> we got ice cream. So I ate haagen basically for that night. And we would, we, I think we watched the same show, but it was like this guy and he had like a frog thing on yeah, his shirt <laughs> that would talk to him and suddenly it like <laughs> ran away or something and he was like <laughs> trying to find it and he, we would watch it like every morning and every night. So it was, it was so confusing, but I like <laughs> eventually caught on. And then there was another one where it was like this tree, but on the trunk was this face. And it was it was the weirdest things. Like their TV was so different, but everything was just amazing. Mm. I have some stuff to oh. add. Oh, did oh. you want to go? Yeah. Okay. Maybe like Gracie go first. No, you can go first. Okay, you can oh, go. Sorry. Um, so uh, we had like a minor earthquake like three times there, oh. and the first night like I shook. And I was like, hmm, maybe it's like anxiety, like Justin said. <laughs> and then like, and then like the parent is, the parents came in. They're like, are you okay? Are you okay? Um, and I was like, yeah. What happened? And they're like, there was an earthquake. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's what the shaking was. <laughs> and we had that like twice more, like kind of every other day, kind of. And um, 
we also did fireworks like oh, almost every other night. Oh, really? And some of the fireworks were like awesome there. And on the last night that I stayed there, um, uh, my host family invited uh, Maeve's host family and Owen's host family. And right, we had a huge fireworks party. And it was just like so cool because like all the families kind of brought fireworks. And uh, that earlier that day, uh, we went to the mall. We went to a mall, and uh, the host mother, the well, my host, the host uh, kid Rio and Motoy, they saw this huge firework thing, and they're like, "Buy this, buy this to their mom," and so they did, and it turns, <laughs> it went like a hundred feet up in the air, and it went like, pff, like one of the Fourth of July fireworks, oh, and it was fine. like so loud, but it was just an amazing time there. They are legal there. Well, um, well, the first dinner that I had, they didn't think that I liked Japanese food, so they kept trying to like Americanize their meals. Like the first day, they asked me like, "Oh, what do you eat for breakfast?" So I told them I had toast with jam, and so the next day we had toast, but um, the host father put ketchup on it. <laughs> 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 I don't know why, but that's just what he did. And the TV was weird because we watched the news, but it wasn't like boring news. It was actually like, I don't know, maybe it was because I was in Japan, but some of the ads were weird. Like I saw an ad for like this human claw machine where they'd like strap you in and you got to like <laughs> grab the stuff. Yeah. It was really weird. I don't know. I really don't understand it at all, but it was pretty cool. And there wasn't actually that much dessert, but I did have this jello that was coffee flavored, and I poured cream on it, and it was actually good. And it sounds gross, but it was good. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Great. Um, we have one more. Okay. Also, on the, um, my last night, Noah and I must have lit off over 100 fireworks okay. and like 50 sparklers. It was crazy. Because <laughs> we, um, we had. We went through like two boxes of matches, and okay. we were just going one after the other, lighting, them, lighting them, <laughs> turning back, and then lighting and lighting. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> 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 it was really fun. Great. So as you can see, we we all have so much that I mean we we potentially could keep you all here all night long with all the stories that we want to share and um, practically exploding with these incredible experiences and we thank you all so so much for um, helping us all to get there really thank you. well it sounds like you had a really Amazing. great time and you got memories for a lifetime and hopefully um, now your family's a host and you'll get to meet all the people that you had to leave so sadly so you'll get <laughs> to see them again and keep in touch with them so that was that was very very good nice presentation thank yeah. you anybody want to question or anything? No, I just said if the girls could turn around so oh that they yeah. could pick up on the camera what the obis look like in the back because their obis are really cute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which camera? There yeah, we go. There's a camera. Oh, camera go over here. Yeah, that's there we go. Mm -hmm. Can somebody pick up the obis on the camera? Yeah. They're, 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 on. There, they're, they're on. on. There they are. Yeah. yeah so pretty. You Very nice. Hmm. Very good. So nicely put on by Mrs. Yeah. Burke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having us here. Yeah. We appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Nice job. Yeah. <coughs> right. Marley. Thank you. So now we have uh, the home education plan approval. Dr. Maestas? Yes, tonight we have four additional home education plans that are on the agenda for your approval. They have been, they've been reviewed by uh, Dr. Halpin's office and meet requirements uh, set forth uh, by the district. So uh, I recommend approval. Move the recommendation, administration. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, Mrs. Burgess seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Now we have uh, fundraising activities. Anybody see anything? Still kind of early in the school year to have any feedback, really, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. For the f fundraisers, yeah. Mm, Anybody? No. No. Okay. No. 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 
And does anybody have anything they'd like to report to the committee? Yep, Ms. Hunt. Um, I don't know that I had notes in here. I'm not following here. Oh, they didn't save. Um, the Distinguished Visitors Committee met this week. Um, and some of the things that we discussed were we're in the process of making a manual for future Shishigahama trips as well as welcoming here um, just so that we will have something to refer to at all times. I know that there have been things in the past, but they're not really that complete, so we're working on that. One of the other things that we're working on is trying to define what a distinguished visitor is. Um, with the 400th coming up, we've realized in the past we've mostly mm. been focusing on Chishigahama, um, but it seems like we're getting into a lot more Plymouth, England. Uh, we had some visitors from Italy that were really instrumental in developing the Cordage company that came last year. So there are going to be a lot more distinguished visitors other than just our Shishigahama friends. Um, one thing that they did ask me to bring to the committee and to Dr. Maestas and you actually somebody just hit upon it is when we are going to start recruiting for families next year mm. so that we can start and we also they also want to start to get some dates. Mm. Um, they're just you know planning for summer. It's really hard for us to get accommodations in the summer for hotels. So okay. they want to start looking at getting dates. I, I will send Shishigahama an email and ask them to start thinking about it as well. Uh, follow up. I have a couple of, of questions that you can pose okay. to, to them. Um, first, how many um, students are they planning on sending? Okay. And again, on the other side, how many uh, delegates are they going to send from the municipal side, government, education? So if we can get the total number. I think the host families we can start working on. Um, I think that's probably easier than the hotel piece. Right, right. So if we know the number, we can start working on that. Okay. okay. Um, and one other thing, uh, we, we looked at a lot of other distinguished visitor committees. We found one from the military that actually was very, very helpful <laughs> as far as protocol. Um, and one of the things that they've been talking about is that it's really important to keep to the, the delegates or the distinguished, you know, the mayor or whoever comes, that they're in the center of town. And we do have a lot more hotels that have been built in Plymouth, but they're not really near anything. Yeah. And it's really, really important that they're housed within walking distance of, of things. So um, that's what we're working on uh, with the Distinguished Visitors Committee. And the other thing that I, I did this week um, was I attended the Big Lots ribbon cutting ceremony and uh, I did want to mention that to thank them because they gave a check of two thousand dollars each to Hedge Elementary and Nathaniel Morton Elementary and I was lucky enough to have the morning off and come and witness the the checks and Dr. Maestas actually cut the ribbon so that was exciting to watch as well did a good job hey the scissors were sharp <laughs> <laughs> and that's it Good. Ms. Badger? I have my usual, I'll just save the date for our alumni association meeting. Oh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't mention that. because On you're October 22nd, um, at 6.15, we moved the meeting back by 15 minutes because I can never make it for 6 o'clock. Um, and we had a really productive meeting. I think we we're really make, um, making strides to get to where, you know, um, will be more of a contributor instead of ideas and talking. So we're at that stage to really start taking the next step. Good. Anybody else? I had a meeting uh, with the chairmans, uh, Chairman Grandy and uh, Chairman Tavares, and that was very productive. And we touched on all our issues and uh, a lot of things happening, obviously. So it's good that we stay in sync. Um, anybody else have anything they want to add? If not, building committee. Have you guys met since last week? No, we'll be meeting <laughs> on uh, October eighth. And uh, I don't believe there were any appointments or no. nothing to report there. And now the accounts payable warrant. Ms. Badger. 
All right. Whereas school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction <coughs> summary report and warrant for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S0924 dated I'm um, 15 dated September 24, 2015 in the amount of $952,536.23 as presented. And do we have a second? Mrs. Burgess seconds it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, miss. And that brings us to the end of this evening's meeting. So at 8.25, we're adjourned. Wow.